Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to the new mom series na gagawin ko where I'm gonna be sharing yung mga experiences ko from birth to like postpartum and then sa ngayon. And I wanted to start it with my birth story. Before man matapos yung taon, gusto ko lang din sana i-reminisce yung birth experiences ko. And mas okay na ako ngayon mentally, emotionally. Mas stable na ako. At I think mas makakwento ko ng maayos. Kasi, ano mo, hindi ko alam kung masusundan pa si Jerry ni, but sa ngayon, hindi pa namin paano. Gusto ko lang i-record kung ano yung nag experiences ko. So, ang EDD ko or estimated date of delivery was June 8, 2023. Nanganak ako June 4, 2023. So, four days before my EDD. So, one week maybe before ako manganak, nakaramdam na ako ng mga symptoms ba? Yung symptoms na yun, same siya pag malapit na akong magka-period. Like, ano ako, nagda-diarrhea ako. Tapos, naramdaman ko yung lightning. Yung parang, parang, gumaan yung pakiramdam ko. Tapos, ano pa ba? Ang lakas ang feeling ko na malapit na yung naramdaman ko. And then, yung Braxton Hicks contractions ko, mas naging more frequent siya. Pero wala pa siyang pain. So, May 29, I was experiencing pre-labor symptoms. Update. Medyo sumasakit na. And, papahinga lang ako kasi naglakad ako kanina. Tsaka nag-stretching. Tsaka kumain. So, pahinga na muna. So, ayun. Nakabahan ako kasi feeling ko malapit na. Malapit na siyang lumabas. Pero, whenever you're ready, anak, mommy is just here waiting for you. And, syempre, yung contractions ko hindi pa ganun regular. And, hindi pa siya masakit. But, nararamdaman ko na it's getting stronger and stronger. May 29 to June 1, yun ay nararamdaman ko. So, June 2, I was having labor pains na medyo hindi na ako mapakali nung mga araw na yun. Medyo masakit na siya, pero um, nakakaya ko pa. Hindi na ako nakatulog noon kasi nagigising na ako each contraction sa nararamdaman ko. June 2 ng umaga, ayan na. Um, yung pain, it's much, much stronger. I can still talk, I can still walk, but I have to position myself kung saan ako mas makakapag- um, pag breathe through the contractions and then I try to um, I try to distract myself na kiling ako sa music na kiling ako kay Britney Spears kay Beyonce para lang can get through the contractions I was religiously timing my contractions intervals and then nalala ko one time nag Nag-511 ata ako. And then, tinawagan ko na yung asawa ko. Sabi ko, kailangan natin pumunta ng hospital kasi nga, naging regular yung contractions ko. So, pumunta kami ng hospital like June 2 ng gabi. Tapos, yung labor and delivery nurse, they did a cervical check. And, oh my gosh, sobrang sakit pala nun. As in, sobrang sakit na halos mahimatay ako. Hindi ako OA ha. Grabe, hindi ko makakalimutan yung pain na yun. Unfortunately, I think nasa 1cm pa lang ata ako nun. And pinauwi ako. Ganun, ganito kasi dito eh. Like, <clears throat> if you're like less than 3cm, you have to go home first. Noong una, bakit, bakit kailangan ko umuwi? I'm already having like regular contractions. Pero yung purpose pala nun is... Uh, mas nakakapagpahinga pala ako pag nandito ako sa bahay when I'm having some contractions pa. And then I can sleep pag nasa hospital ka. Siyempre, narinig mo yung call bells, in and out yung mga pasyente. So, umuwi ka na lang kasi mas makakapagpahinga ka sa bahay. Anyway, nakita ko yung purpose why we needed to go home. So, June 3, ayan na. Hindi na ako makahinga. 
hindi na ako makapagsalita. And then, um, naging 411 ata yung contractions ko. Thank God, kasi day off na ni Gerald nun. Um, so, June 3 ng gabi, I think around 6-7 p.m., pumunta na kami ng hospital. And then, um, they did another cervical check. And then, oh, I'm just yeah, sobrang sakit talaga. Siguro yun yung pinakamasakit na nangyari. Anyway, so I was, I think, two and a half. And then, sabi ng midwife, magstay na ako sa hospital kasi anytime, magpo-progress na siya. Na ako sa delivery room. And um, one to one ng nurse patient ratio doon. <coughs> talaga is madilim na. And then, ang nakapagbigay lang sa akin ng comfort. was using yung gas um, to get through it but masakit talaga hindi ako nagpro-progress hindi nagpro-progress yung cervix ko I was in a lot of pain that was preventing my cervix to like progress June 4 na naman daling araw 3cm pa din ako right so labor now for 3 days and hindi pa pala puputok yung water ko nun the midwife suggested an epidural I did the epidural and oh my gosh, sobrang nawala yung pain, sobrang nakapagpahinga ako. Hindi ako nakatulog though kasi nararamdaman ko pa rin yung contractions, anong pa rin yung pain but it made me feel so much better. And then they artificially ruptured yung water ko kasi yun nga, hindi nga nagpro-progress. And then after that, at 7am ng June 4, uh, I was at 7 centimeters or 8 na. The midwife told me that I have to be ready sa pag-push. And then, like, around that time then, nag-progress na into 10. And then, dun, dun na nag-push. So, kahit may epidural, masakit pa din. Naramdaman ko pa rin yung contractions. Naramdaman ko pa rin yung pain. And then, nahirapan ako mag-push. I was pushing, like, for 3 hours. So, 7 to 9. Si Jeremy, na-stuck na yung head niya sa birth canal and then um, they had to call the ob me the doctor and I was checked by the doctor um, since delikado nga kasi stuck na yung head ni Jeremy um, they explained to me that they had to do a forcep delivery so they had to use a forcep to pull out Jeremy's head and I was like okay lang ako kung anong mangyari if kailangan ko i-CS or ano mo di pa pala ako ma-CS but um, thank God kasi nairaos at 9.30 of June 4, pinanak si Jeremy. When I first saw him, um, I was like, nawala lahat ng pagod. Totoo pala yung literal na no, nawala lahat ng pagod mo, nawala lahat yung pain mo during yung childbirth. I was glad kasi sinunod nila yung birth plan ko. Um, during my midwife checkups, uh, tinanong nila ako kung ano yung mga plans ko during birth. And number one sa list ko was, if they had to do an episiotomy on me, they shouldn't tell me kasi ayoko malaman kasi mas lalo akong kakabahan and then they did an physiotomy without telling me and then I was so glad that they followed yung birth plan ko I also wanna thank yung nurse ko that time um, andun lang sila to provide support to encourage to listen to your concerns and they suggest talaga yung best interventions na safe naman and alam nilang makakabuti para sa'yo that was my birth story after that, 
uh, hindi na talaga ako nakatulog. Uh, sobrang overwhelmed kami ni Gerald that day. Hindi namin maalis sa mata namin si Jeremy. Sobrang iit niya. Para siyang daga. <laughs> oh my gosh. Andito na siya. Sayang na video ko sana. Pero hindi pawal. And I respect naman yung privacy ng staff. Kaya ako kinagawa tong video na to for me to, you know, have something na maalala ko, na mapapanood ko. Kasi makakalimutin ako eh. So, I'd rather like record myself telling a story. So, I think I we stayed like two to three hours sa uh, delivery room and then we were transferred na to the maternity ward. Um, thank God, yung insurance namin covered a private room. So, yung first 24 hours, um, hindi ko talaga alam yung gagawin ko. I felt pressured na magpa-breastfeed kasi anong alam ko, ba? So, parang na-pressure ako na magpa-breastfeed noong una. And then, hindi pa talaga lumabas yung milk sa breasts ko. So, I was like, may mali ba sa akin? Natatakot ako kasi hindi pa nag-dedede si Jeremy kasi tulog lang siya. And then, wala pang milk. So... The next day, when they check yun nga, yung um, bilirubin level niya, medyo mataas na, na-discharge na kami sa bahay. We survived our first night as new parents. <laughs> I think 24 to 48 hours, may pumuntang midwife. And then, chinect na si Jeremy. And then, Jeremy, nag-yellow na siya noon. And then, hindi talaga siya nagde-dede. Um, wala talaga lumalabas sa breast ko noon. And then, naalala ko po yat, alagang literal na wala kaming tulog ng asawa ko. Kasi alam mo yung one meal na syringe, talaga in-express ko yung meal ko para makuha yung kolosyon. Tapos pinapadede ko. And then, Jeremy wakes up like every 30 minutes kasi hindi siya kasi gutom siya eh hindi pa namin alam na gutom siya noon not until dumating yung midwife to check up on us so the midwife came assess Jeremy he was turning yellow um, he was hungry and then we had to go back to the hospital and then they did uh, a blood work and then apparently his bilirubin was really high and we ha they had to admit him like for 48 hours did phototherapy and then Nakastress din pala yun, no? Pagka na-admit yung baby mo, baby mo for uh, jaundice. Kasi you have to weigh yung diaper niya. You have to feed every two hours. You have to pump. On top of that, you are... I was still recovering sa birth ko. And then, literal na dalawa lang kami ni Gerald. Yung family namin, both sides, they were working. Day 4 after giving birth. And we have to stay in the hospital because now it's really Gusto ko lang i-share yung mga na-experience namin ganun. Pag naalala ko, parang sobrang proud ako sa aming dalawang mag-asawa kasi nakaya namin dalawa yun. Nang dalawa lang kami. Ang hirap kasi nagre-recover pa ako noon. Naglalakad ako. Sobrang short of breath ko. Talagang hindi ko iniisip yung sarili ko noon. Yun lang birth story ko. Yun yung first 72 hours namin as new parents. Talagang walang tulog. Literal. Um... Shout out sa kapatid ko nung na-admit si Jeremy. Talaga namang pumunta ng hospital to bring us food. Um, sobrang na-appreciate sa kapatid ko kasi hindi kami close pero like he was there when we needed food kasi bili lang kami sa Team Hortons. Hindi <laughs> pa namin lang kung kailangan kami mag breakfast. So, thank you sa kapatid ko. So, yun guys. Medyo emotional tong video na to but 
I'm happy. I'm really glad na na-experience namin yun. Mahirap man, pero sobrang ganda niya at the same time. Um, gusto ko lang i-validate din yung mga nararamdaman namin noon. So, yun. Thank you for watching and I hope you are enjoying your holidays with your families. I hope na supportahan niyo po itong vlog ko. Please like and subscribe uh, for more videos. Sana makapag-upload pa po ako. Um, medyo mahirap lang maging consistent ngayon kasi, kasi full-time ako nag-aalaga, nagpapalaki sa anak namin. Really glad na kagawa ko ng video na katulad nito. And this is for me to keep memories having a baby, being a pregnant, being a first-time mom really changed my life. So I wanted to, you know, record whatever I learned, whatever I experienced. I'm bilis ng panahon, so I'm glad na I have this opportunity. I have this way of keeping memories. So yeah, thank you. God bless. Bye.